everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, welcome to the Kananaskis area where an interesting study is taking place looking at bull trout and whether or not bull trout eggs can be transplanted into streams like this. Of course, there have been many challenges facing bull trout here in Alberta. So bull trout are Alberta's provincial fish and they're kind of like the grizzly bears of our mountain and foothill rivers. They're often the top predator on the food chain. They can get to very large sizes and they have silvery missile shaped bodies with pale spots on the side. In their spawning season, they develop bright white leading edges on their fins and the males grow big hooked lower jaws called a kipe, very similar to a salmon that you'd see on the coast. Unfortunately, many populations of bull trout across the province aren't doing very well right now. And depending on where you are, it could be a combination of one or many things. In some cases, it's habitat degradation. In others, it's overfishing and maybe even competition and hybridization with stocked non-native eastern brook trout. So really, the right recipe for recovery really depends on what population that we're hoping to recover. Recovery stocking is different than recreational stocking that most people are familiar with. Recreational stocking is done to create a fishery for people to enjoy, whereas recovery stocking is done to conserve a species and in some cases even bring it back from the brink of extinction. Here in Alberta, we typically do recovery stocking to address a couple key threats, climate change and competition and hybridization with stocked eastern brook trout. Partnerships play a crucial role in the success of a bull trout recovery program. Over the next few days, fishery biologists from EPA will be collaborating with counterparts from DFO, the University of Calgary, the Alberta Conservation Association and FRI Research, which are one of the collaborators for Native Trout Recovery Program. Partnerships and volunteers are absolutely critical to native trout recovery. The problems that we need to address to recover native trout are far too complex for us to do by ourselves. And there are many different ways that people can get involved in improving the lives of native trout. And it could be as simple as if you're an angler, make sure you're handling those fish properly. Or if you want to get your hands dirty, check out our partner websites, Trout Unlimited Canada or Cows and Fish, and come out for a day and help plant willows and make habitat even better. Bull trout swim up this creek to spawn, which allows biologists to use electrofishing to catch enough males and females. Once caught, the fish are held in a netted off area in a deep pool. So the idea here is that uh, folks are wearing electropack going along the banks and just bringing out these monster bull trout. I've never seen anything like it and I've been fishing for, I don't know, an awful lot of years here in Alberta, but this is simply amazing to see. One of the contributing factors to the growth of this population of bull trout is the angling restrictions introduced in the 90s. Since then, the government of Alberta and organizations like the Alberta Conservation Association have been keeping tabs on this critical spawning creek. Yeah, so ACA has um, some history out here. So we supported a project on the uh, population estimates work done in the Upper Kananaskis bull trout population late 90s, early 2000s. So with the closure out here, it's really just nice to see the amount and the healthy size of the, of the fish that we were seeing the last couple days. After collecting a number of bull trout, the next step is to harvest the eggs from the females and the milt from the males. However, biologists need to ensure that the females are ready to lay their eggs before this process can take place. So I've never seen beautiful those. eggs. Uh, yes. Look at the size of it. Oh, there they are. You can see that. Wow. All the way back. Yep. That's the in line. And just how many eggs will a single female bull trout lay? Well, you really put me on the spot here, Michael, but I would estimate around 2,400 eggs per female on the higher side. 
And when it comes to the milk needed to fertilize the eggs, one has to ask is that uh, the volume or the potency that biologists are looking for? That's a tremendous question. Um, visually, you can ascertain on the melt sort of the, the potency. If it's a really solid white, you might put in less. Other stuff was pretty watery, so we were able to use probably about a cc from each male for the fertilization. Too much milt is no good. It'll actually choke the microfile and allow for a poorer fertilization. And if you don't have enough, there's just not enough sperm to actually swim to each egg. Um, so it's kind of a, a fine line, more of a learn as you go and from just historical knowledge. In order to ensure genetic diversity, the milt from four male bull trout is being used to fertilize these eggs. And if we did have one male with poor milt, we can ensure fertilization to the other three. A little more, Lindsay, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. A little faster, a little faster. There we go. One other question that remains to be answered from this study is whether or not biologists can successfully plant bull trout eggs into suitable spawning locations. So we're taking these eggs and going to put them in little capsules and be burying those capsules back in the stream to then see the survival rates over winter so we'll pick them back up in the spring and see how many fish have survived. And this should give us a good idea of if this can be an effective method for conservation translocations. So obviously translocations aren't a universal solution, but we can use those in locations where the population's already extirpated. So the first step today is a fisheries biologist is going to dig a hole about 20 or 30 centimeters deep and that mimics exactly what that big female bull trout is going to do. Next step is we measure and make sure that we have achieved that right depth and then we carefully drop the egg capsule into stream and it looks a little bit like a hockey puck. Inside that egg capsule there's 50 fertilized bull trout eggs and some uh, and some gravel just to protect the eggs and make sure they, they stay well oxygenated throughout the winter time. Afterwards, a biologist will just gently cover that egg capsule with gravels once more. And again, this is exactly what would happen in nature with one of those big bull trout. So in five to six months, we'll be returning to site, digging up those egg capsules and seeing just how many eggs survive throughout the winter time. And that's going to be the critical learning that we need to go forward and use this technique in other places across the East Slopes. Biologists must learn how to identify the best spots in a stream for planting bull trout eggs. These fish can detect areas where groundwater seeps in, providing ideal conditions for incubating eggs. But factors such as substrate size, water depth, and temperature may all be crucial environmental conditions that must be evaluated. For this study, over a hundred of these pucks will be planted into the stream bed at various locations. Department of Fisheries and Oceans, one of the key partners in this Kananaskis bull trout study, and they are here particularly to take some eggs back to Winnipeg, where they're going to look at what impact global warming may have on future production of bull trout. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rearing those eggs under different temperature regimes. So we're going to fluctuate the temperature to simulate climate warming scenarios. As these streams warm, these eggs will be um, affected differently uh, than they currently are. And so we're trying to understand um, if these streams warm by four degrees or six degrees during spawning time, how will that affect the viability, the survival and development of the eggs? And so, and that will help us understand what constitutes um, critical habitat, but also how to protect ha those habitats. I am very optimistic about the uh, 
the the future for bull trout mostly because of collaborations like this we have so many different groups that are so passionate about conserving and protecting populations like these <laughs> We should have an idea soon on whether or not these in-stream incubators will be successful. If they are, we'll have another tool to use in an effort to ensure bull trout will continue to be integral to the intricate balance of Alberta's ecosystem. Till next time everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors.